I wrote this song, uh, Mind Reader, with my good friend Jake Lamond, and we wrote it like right around Christmas time. Uh, he came over, took like three hours to write it, so like fairly quickly. And the first thing that we came up with, I thought was really really cool, was this. That pretty much rides throughout the whole song except for the verses, it's in all the choruses, kind of gives it like a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of pulse, which is really nice. I think one of my favorite things about this song is that it has a very like subtle 90s vibe to it. When Jake and I were writing the song, we kind of wanted to, we always like to think in terms of like writing and end credit music. Uh, like not music necessarily for the trailer or for a scene in the movie, but music for the end. And once this was finished, I was like, I would totally hear this at the end of the movie. And I think one of the things that makes it feel a little bit more 90s is the acoustic guitar. And it's super, super prevalent. I think it's like throughout the whole track. So I'll show you guys some of those uh, soloed out here. So let's talk some more about guitars. There's actually quite a bit of electric guitar in this song. It's just not super prevalent. There's no big like but. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is this kind of palm unit part that's throughout all of the choruses and all the post choruses. It actually adds a lot, it's just not something you really notice right away. So I'll show you that right now. Again, that's something that I really think most people would notice on the first listen, or maybe even at all, but when you take it out, it's you definitely feel it, you, you feel a loss. Okay, so now I want to talk about one of my favorite parts of the song, um, the slide guitar, and it's super prevalent throughout the whole track. It's in the verses, it's in the choruses, as opposed to somewhere else where it's really just kind of at the end, like the big climactic part at the end of the song. But here it's throughout the whole thing, um, but it does a good job at not being too random. It's not just kind of like randomly placed throughout, it does build upon itself. Um, but I want to show you guys some of those parts on their own. No, there's something about slide that's just it's so loose and it always makes it cool like it's just not rigid love it all right so let's dive into some drums uh it's kind of similar to somewhere else in that they kind of have this vibe of is it a real kit is it just samples and they are just samples but they're layered in a way that i think is really full without being too overpowering for the track and i just kind of want to go through and show you guys the drums on their own So you just have this real hat, or I mean, it's a real sounding hat. I believe that's just from Slate. I love how muffled the toms are. They kind of feel like you track them with like a blanket on top, and that's definitely what we're going for. So last thing for the drums, uh, honestly, my favorite part of the drums that I think kind of drives that sort of 90s feel forward is the ride cymbal, and I'm gonna show you guys that right now. Another thing that I love about the second verse, and it shows up at the very end of the song as well, there's just like park sound, like park noise in the uh, in the second verse. And I don't think that anybody would really hear it, but I definitely know it's there, and that's probably because I, I, that I know it's there. But I want to show you guys that really quick, because it's awesome. I don't know, it's cool, it adds something. I mean, when we were playing with it in the studio, I would just thought, like, it'd be cool to have some sort of vocal element that's not singing. Let's talk about uh, some synths. There's a lot in the song, lots of pads, lots of different little moving parts. Um, definitely gets bigger as the song goes on. So let's check some out and see what, uh, see what sounds cool. Vinyl sound from RC20, shout out RC20. And then that weird little flaring that you're hearing is from, it's from a plugin called Portal, it just kind of like randomizes things. And I have it, I have it tuned down real, real low so it's not too uh, overbearing, which adds some really cool textures. Some white noise. It's just a really nice wall of sound that is definitely complementary to the track and isn't trying to win the instrumental, if that makes sense. 
Oh, there's these guys too. Kind of like vintage spacey sound. Here's another really cool layer that's at the very end of the song. Um, again, it's just the super reverbed out, kind of like ad libby part that I had in the demo and that we just kept in the song. Um, I think, again, it's one of those things I think you can feel and not many necessarily hear so much, but I do want to show you guys that because it's, it's one of my favorite parts of the vocals. It's just kind of as, acting as an accent to like the main parts of the chorus. They sound kind of funny and random on their own, but they definitely do a good job of accentuating the right parts. So I'm gonna play the last, again, the last part of the chorus uh, with, the, with the guitars and just kind of show you guys what's going on because there's a ton of layers at the end uh, with the vocals. <laughs> So the harmonies only come in on that call and response, what made you think, so out of sync. Um, and again, like it's really rewarding to finally get those in the song because they don't really pop up too much elsewhere in the, in the rest of the track. Thank you so much for watching this production breakdown from Mind Reader. I had a lot of fun making this song and I'm honestly just thrilled that anyone's remotely interested in the behind the scenes of it. Um, if you guys have any questions about something I didn't mention, just let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.